Hi everybody, Puffin here. I was just uh, wanted to make a video about the Trump mob today. I was watching the coverage of it. I wanted to talk about the um, actions of the police and the mob themselves, uh, seizing, seizing the Capitol and uh, terrorist acts in the, on the Capitol and to try to stop the election, I guess, was their goal or something. Um, but I didn't want to talk about the police response and about the media coverage of it because I was watching Fox for a few hours, a couple hours maybe, and then uh, NBC after that, and it was, uh, you know, good that they were covering it. Um, you know, Fox cut to Judge Judy at 6, but so I turned to NBC, but, uh, and then tuned back in maybe a little bit later for the local Fox News. Which I did want to speak about before I get off on those subjects. So I guess I wanted to say thanks to everybody who voted, um, especially everybody who voted and everybody who you know did good stuff today too, of course. Especially everybody who likes finally making statements, you know, strong statements against Trump for what he's done and what he did today, especially. Um, but before I you know, lose it in the narrative is what happened to the media today. The wanted to thank Georgia, my home state, and all the Georgians for voting uh, for uh, flipping the Senate and staying, keeping Georgia blue and getting bluer, I hope. And just thanks to everybody who worked on that because that was an important piece of all this that got lost in the narrative of the Trump mob. But that's really what I wanted to talk about because um, I guess I was excited going to sleep, you know, yesterday morning, honestly, Wednesday morning, uh, you know, at the, at the victory in Georgia. And I fully anticipated uh, trouble at the Capitol. Today I've been anticipating that, you know, ever since, I think everybody was, um, ever since. Uh, Trump was has started talking about it, and uh, everybody was obviously responding to it. So, I mean, all these all these uh, people were going to show up, and um, that's one of the discussions that they did have some in the media. And I appreciate the media for having some of that discussion. That you know they weren't prepared, the police weren't prepared, and also that they didn't prepare in anywhere near the same way that they did for Black Lives Matter protesters in the summer. And the comparison isn't really a good comparison to begin with because it's not the same thing, but just as far as how they treat people, and the reason it's not the same thing is because Black Lives Matter protesters have a message and the Trumper protesters weren't really protesting anything because what they were protesting, you know, the election was kind of like, well, just protesting democracy is what they're protesting. They might think that they're protesting some type of nefarious actions, but it's a myth. So, you know, it's not a myth that, you know, people are being targeted by the police and stuff like that. That's a legitimate complaint that protesters are trying to raise. And they do that with peaceful protests, you know, in a, for the most part, in a, uh, to, to get a message across. And the uh, Trump riot today, the Trump mob that took over the Capitol, they weren't trying to get a message across, they are just trying to stop democracy. It's a completely different thing. But aside from that, the... I mean, considering it's a different thing, you think the police or military response or whatever would be greater than against peaceful protesters. But of course, if you know, if you've paid any attention, you know, the police have been beaten up and killing and tear gassing and shooting and shooting rubber bullets and shooting. Uh, peaceful protesters and people just around the peaceful protesters or whatever in the area, um, and the National Guard has done that, uh, you know, for months, constantly. And, um, you know, I'm not saying, well, they should have shot the, you know, the Trumpers. Although I, you, you think, well, you know, they should have done some they should have used some greater force or some greater something to prevent uh, if it had been built some type of barricades anticipating their arrival 
whatever it was, they should have done something more, and not just something more than what they did, because the comparison between just looking at them as crowd control measures, the comparison between how they treated the Black Lives Matter protesters, basically they, they do end up, on most occasions, beating uh, and attacking peaceful protesters just for fun. That's what happens at the Black Lives Matter protests. Now, I wasn't expecting they were going to use those same tactics on the Trumpers. I don't think anybody was. Kind of welcoming, welcoming them in, like doing everything other than serving them an hors d'oeuvre tray, it was kind of what we saw. Like, I went to sleep, as I said, in the morning. Woke up about 3 o'clock uh, Colorado time. So, at you know, 5 p.m. at that time. So by the time I saw the TV or came to, uh, looked at the looked at the at the footage, the live footage, the Trumpers are already in the Capitol or almost in the Capitol. It, they were, you know, they're already up the steps and everything. So I didn't see the actual resistance of the police. Like I didn't see what whatever amounted to that. Um, you know, I guess a few minutes before I tuned in. But I saw some of it in recaps. I saw what I guess was some of the most dramatic footage in recaps of uh, maybe one or the other side of the police line, either the protesters pepper spraying the police or vice versa, I can't remember. And then there was a, there was a scene of the police backing up the Capitol steps, which I can't see ever being a tactical move. You know, backing up the steps I don't know. I didn't see what happened right before that or whatever, but I just saw, you know, a few more police backing up the steps after most of the police had backed up the steps. And most of the police is like 12 or something. There's like 20, 20 something police in this line. And it just didn't compare at all to what they've done to the Black Lives Matter protesters. And again, I'm, you know, the whole point of the protesters that the police shouldn't have this much power. And I guess one thing I was thinking about is if there was some type of violence or act, you know, aggressive action on the part of the protesters that even if the police are on the side of the protesters which they kind of are they're, they're trumpers they're supporting trump more than they're supporting america or americans in most cases um if it came to some sort of violence or confrontation and trumpers somehow attack the police the police's natural protecting each other tendencies would kick in and they would do some of these same things to the protesters that they had otherwise had no plans on doing to the Trumpers, but they're glad to do to the Black Lives Matter protesters, which is pure racism, and we can talk about that too much to address it specifically here. But just the, their white supremacist system, and they know that the Trumpers are representing that as well. So they're on the same side. And like I said, they seem to be kind of welcoming, welcoming them into the Capitol more than putting up any type of resistance, in addition to not having put it up now. There was also, you know, contingency plans and stuff and calling in the National Guard. So I heard the Army spokesperson saying that, you know, there was a 30-minute debate. And he didn't say who that debate was between at the time. He just said there was a 30-minute debate on whether or not to call in the National Guard. And I was already like, well, that's, you got a traitor there or you got some traitors there in that room. You know, whoever's on the other side of that debate that delayed the discussion for 30 minutes. And then you find out later in the day the reporting... I guess from the New York Times that they, um, that, you know, Trump was the one who said don't call in the National Guard and Pence was the one who ultimately called them in. But it took the 30 minutes of debate between those two, I guess, to get the more National Guard there than the 320 unarmed National Guard they originally provided. It's just, you know, it's like not just a joke, it's more like an insult that it's already been an insult what they do to the Black Lives Matter protesters or other protesters as well. It's super insult, super Nazi stuff what they did to the Standing Rock protesters. It's already, that's already been an insult. But then to, or like within the Occupy movement, they, you know, uh, escorted a KKK parade uh, through the, you know, the police escorted the KKK parade through to protect them because it's okay for the, you know, this type of crap is such an insult, and this is basically a KKK parade that Trump activated from wherever they started to march up to the Capitol. And the cops basically welcomed them, or those cops that they had put out there basically welcomed them. You hear things in the reports that in the Hall of Congress, 
the they had to barricade the doors with furniture because they couldn't find the keys. Now, who's hiding the key on a day like today when they can kind of fully expect this stuff to happen? Just it you know boggles the mind unless you start to consider not a, a complex conspiracy, just what's really kind of right in front of you that these people are kind of in on trying, certain people are kind of in on trying to make this coup attempt succeed as far as hiding the key to the Congress, as far as, you know, putting certain cops out there that are kind of welcoming, welcome the people in. And so there definitely wasn't any sort of heavy handed response to them violently intruding on the Capitol. Whereas there's a heavy handed response to Black Lives Matter protesters retreating. But again, if you already know this, if you've paid any attention to that, and you're already appalled by the differences. Um, and I did want to talk some about the media. But one other thing I want to say before moving on from the direct police response is that, you know, everybody's talking about like this is a done deal. Well, these Trumpers are still there. You know, the most agitated or whatever of them are probably going to be back again today. So have they learned their lesson yet? I mean, I imagine that they're going to have more of like the secondary police response. That's the other, the last thing I do want to say about the police response is when they did bring in the same types of forces, stormtrooper type forces like they use against peaceful protesters all over the country. When they did bring them in, they cleared the Trumpers out, you know, in a matter of minutes. So it's like, I mean, they, then they had to clean everything up for hours after that and, you know, search everywhere, I guess. But as far as cleaning, as far as pushing back the crowd that was so threatening, um, they did that pretty quickly once they brought in, you know, that same level of, or a similar level of force. And while I heard, saw Fox News talking about people coming away who had been tear gassed, I didn't see any evidence of that. I didn't see anybody looking like they'd been tear gassed. Now, maybe it was just the scene I happened to see. But no comparison in the forces. And then to segue to the media coverage, you know, they talked to one of the representatives who says, you know, Trump's not responsible for what these people did. They're responsible. And he's planning on objecting to the vote and all this other stuff. And they're talking to him in order to kind of try to talk him out of that. Like, are you still going to do that now after you see what it's led to? And he said, yeah, he is. And, you know, he's not responsible for what people who listen to him do. And I'm not a Charlie Manson fan, Charles Manson fan. Uh, like, I have no respect for this person. But just to ask the basic question, if you're not guilty for what your followers do, why is Charles Manson in prison? Because didn't his followers commit the crimes that he's in prison for? So I think that's going to apply. And I'm really grateful to all the people who are speaking in those terms, like including Mitt Romney and you know Joe Biden. To some extent, he said borderline sedition. I don't see what's borderline about it. You know, it's time to really call it what it is so we can end it and root it out from affecting us in the future. And part of the way, the way it's affecting us is through the media. Um, kind of you what you expect from Fox. Kind of disappointed in NBC because they would always, whenever there was a Democrat that would come on to, you know, once they resumed the sessions of Congress, whenever a Democrat came on to speak, with maybe one exception, they would cut away from them and just talk themselves or whatever, or just have some update on nothing. And then they would cut back for like Republicans or cut from the Democrat in the Congress to the Republicans and stuff like that. Just seemed to be not trying to give any time really to, to what Democrats might have been saying at this time, which I thought was weird. But uh, Fox, um, you know, I guess I should appreciate that they would at least maybe mention some facts, you know, about how Trump really didn't win the election, stuff like that throughout it. But one thing that was kind of an interesting uh, faux pas or whatever, um, Freudian slip or something, one of their guys was talking about how they had just finished getting the Trumpers off the Capitol steps. And he said, you know, the cops have gotten themselves off the steps. And I just thought that was funny that he needed me to say that. He meant to say the cops have gotten, you know, the protester or whatever he was going to call them off the steps. But he said the cops have gotten themselves off the steps. And I just thought it was kind of like subconscious uh, Freudian slip thing that he was kind of admitting that the cops and the Trumpers are kind of on the same side. And then another thing about that, you see this footage of... <clears throat> You know, it's just the cops' jackets on the on the steps now. All the people have been pushed off to the side. But there's still a Trump flag just hanging 
I was like, couldn't you just take that off? And it seemed like after maybe 30 minutes, they'd taken it halfway down. And it's like, is that hard to do? Like to remove that, you know, tied on um, the symbol of their insurrection. So, and again, grateful to people who are calling it that, grateful to the media for at least reporting. I mean, even Fox is reporting that, you know, there's talk of using the 25th, invoking the 25th Amendment or that Trump might resign or that, um, you know, they could impeach him against stuff like this. And then that's the thing about the media coverage is it's kind of disappointing what their focus is. It's kind of disappointing that there isn't a little, you know, more outrage. There was some about, like, where, where's the police response, stuff like that. Um, but some specific things, like our local coverage here, our Fox Denver coverage, when it uh, came on in the evening, they had a piece where they showed, you know, they interviewed or, you know, had the video clips from two people who, you know, from Colorado or from nearby who had gone to the Trump rally and some of their video about it and their comments about it. And, you know, one of them made the comment that he was five feet away from the door. I didn't make it in, but I was five feet away from the door. And the other one's, you know, saying that he thought about half the people were for storming the Capitol and the other half weren't, but they were chanting sack the Capitol or whatever. So, you know, it seems like confirmation, co confirming their whole revolutionary intent or whatever it was in some of their, in, you know, just completely kind of illegal authority in the law type of intent and actions in their comments. But Fox had the video on kind of celebrating them or kind of, you know, sharing their perspective, but they didn't do that for any uh, Black Lives Matter protesters, you know, it's not like they ever wanted to hear the protesters' perspective and put a, a clip on about them. In fact, the last thing I saw on that same Fox station about Black Lives Matter protesters was serial protesters, uh, you know, who'd been arrested at multiple protests, and when they got into the crimes they committed, like one girl had refused a police order to stop they didn't ever say what crime she was supposedly having to stop for, but, and then delivered shields to the pro proceeded to deliver shields to the protesters. Like these people sound like heroes to me. And the way Fox presented it while there's talking about whatever smears they had against these people, they would play all this CSI kind of music, like making it sound all, Ooh. and then like immediately after this story and played these weird graphics, like, making everything all grainy and weird. I mean, after the story, they have a story about some, you know, person who's wanted for some triple homicide and that, like, all the dozens of other crimes he's committed, you know, and they do, like, like a typical news thing. They don't play any weird music for it to freak you out further. But the fact that they're playing that weird music for somebody delivering shields to protesters trying to protect themselves from the police, that type of slant was unfortunate. That that's what the last I've seen them like showing protesters they're not like gonna have let the protesters talk or give their side of the story or something but they did for these trump mob people and and it was you know not unexpected but it's just kind of like they're trying to report on this as some type of you know tragedy and attack but then they're showing the attackers and basically kind of praising and siding with them. And I thought that was pretty bad. Uh, example of something that's pretty typical. But uh, just the, the reporting, you know, I guess you can express sympathy for the, for the girl that got shot and killed. Like, you know, one of them, I guess they just thought it was a clever line. They're like, there she, she was fighting for her life on Capitol Hill, and now she's fighting for her life literally in the hospital. I was like, was she fighting for her life on Capitol Hill? No. You know, maybe Trump had ginned these people up into thinking that there was some great threat to them, some great socialist threat if they had. But, you know, the truth is the socialist threat is to white supremacy and, yeah, you know, completely un checked greedy capitalism and corruption and fascism that's what socialism is a threat to socialism is actually pretty much what we're going to need to pull out of the pandemic and just get things going again so it's not anything to be scared of except for these to these fascists so hopefully our 
we're going to go for some of these things that they've tried to paint us with as a bad thing and say, well, hey, you've called us, you know, you've made us out to be the worst socialists there are. So that should mean we could at least be a little bit socialist, you know. Um, and we're going to, it's going to take a lot, honestly, just to get through all this stuff. And I hope that, uh, you know, we can get some more ways of communicating that, um, you know, help, and I, I, like, again, appreciate people saying, making comments. I saw even some news media people, Dan Rather and uh, Nicole Wallace and um, Katie, sorry, Katie Tour, I think, on uh, the late night shows, and they were all great. Um, and Killer Mike was on Seth Meyers, too. He was great. And uh, Don Cheadle also was good. Is You know, they were seeing the, those particular people that I happen to see, um, but knowing that, you know, and seeing what they said, speaking strongly, Seth Meyers himself spoke pretty strongly about it's just time to arrest Trump, it's time to, time to end it. Um, but, you know, even Lindsey Graham on the Senate floor is, I do declare, you know, enough is enough, it's been a fun ride. And he tried to make excuses for everything or tried to, like, still support everything that he's into within his comment, but he was totally... Um, you know, well, that's it, you know, and I'm Lindsey Graham. I'm the last voice of whatever. So, um, and it was great to see Mitt Romney, as I said, but uh, better to see all the people talking. Uh, Nicole Wallace said something about how the media had not, she'd started to call up Trump out more strongly, but had wished she'd done even more, even sooner. And I'm just like, you know, as individuals, I, and I'm sure plenty of other people, have been saying this stuff forever, um, you know, since the beginning, and it just, it's gotten to the point now where they, he's done so much all along that we wanted to get rid of him for, or he deserved to not be there for, um, uh, to be, like, effectively impeached for or removed just for being a criminal, um, and then this has taken it even further, where if you, if you couldn't believe that any of these previous things would would be it. This seems like enough. Um, or it doesn't seem like it is enough. It's whether or not these people can, who are in, you know, in the roles of doing something about it, can interpret it that way through all this like fog of, for some reason, he gets to do whatever he wants to. Which, when it comes down to it, is white supremacy. Like, you exchange the roles of these people. If, if somebody else had, you know, called their followers to storm the Capitol for whatever issue, and then thought, that means we won, you know, we, we made it inside, you know, it's not that type of video game. Um, so, like, if that's how it worked, people, other people would do that. But honestly, I mean, that's ridiculous because no one else could do that. Wait, the only people who, but somebody can do that is the real problem, is the people who can do that, or, or is the KKK, this white supremacy contingent. It's not just because Trump's the president. It's because what, it's because what he's the leader of, and how they have that connection with, um, with the law enforcement, which is one reason you need that reform, and with the system in general. Um, even, you know, these uh, news media people all kind of expressing sympathy, um, not for the Trumpers, not for the the mob itself, because I did hear them calling them terrorists and stuff like that. But for, um, you know, the girl who got shot, it's like, did, did you have that sense? You, you don't even hear about the people that the police are killing at the Black Lives Matter protest until, you know, weeks and months of people chanting their names or when you, you, still, you really don't still hear about them. They, they emphasize some of them. Thankfully, it's good that they do emphasize some of them because it raising the awareness of anybody does it raise awareness, raise awareness for everyone ultimately. But they do that to the to the to focus all the attention on in certain ways, so that uh, you know there's not the time to talk about other people. And there's you know there's plenty of time. They're talking about uh, just like yesterday. I was really upset because they mentioned uh, the investigation into the killing of Elijah McClain here in Denver for 30 seconds in their news broadcast on the Fox local news and. Every half hour, they had two or three minutes on Lauren Boebert and how she was packing heat walking through the D.C. Capitol and stuff like that. 
and we you know we need to recall her we need to we need to be aggressive against these people who are doing this type of stuff because it's not politics it's uh you know it's ultimately uh some type of revolt or whatever and just needs to be turned off before more people taking it seriously um another thing that doesn't get reported is apparently i only heard this through like other news but apparently some other capitals like state capitals and stuff got attacked by these people too and just didn't even get mentioned on the national news and every now and then they say hey you know we didn't we haven't mentioned enough what happened with the georgia election and that's that is important um and it's important that it didn't get attention or are they gonna you know make up for some of that attention tomorrow today uh now that it's morning time you know i kind of hope so but at the same time they're probably gonna have more to talk about because unfortunately some of these people are probably gonna be acting up again now you know will the scenes be any different or whatever will it be something that deters people from doing this in the future um you know i guess that's another reason why hopefully the media can do right and make some distinction between protests which are legitimate and the problem with the police uh, attacking peaceful protesters and these rioters and insurrectionists that they can really arrest for what they've done you know they don't have to wait for them to do more or do it again um, and they probably did arrest some of them. Thank, you know, thankfully, I guess they arrested that Proud Boy leader uh, a few, couple days ago. But uh, maybe they let him back out, or who knows? I mean, it's like there needs to be enough police reform that it includes the fact that they're on the side of these real obvious white supremacists, um, like in direct actions, in addition to a lot of evidence from all this other stuff that they do um and that just that has to be addressed and maybe the police aren't really doing aren't trying to do their job there when their main job is to protect you know the the people but also the you know the capital the democracy uh the workings of democracy maybe they're not trying to do their job and maybe if they do bring in some other um resources those people will be trying to do their job but again it points out a big problem in the way the police are entitled to do whatever they want to do that's on their agenda which you know they've managed to wrap up in this trumpian agenda like so many other people have and you know it's just wrong and evil really um so uh bless everybody for helping uh keep things safe and getting democracy back on and bless everybody for voting, um, for electing our uh, new senators from Georgia. It's really cool. Um, and again, have more good stuff to say about that if it weren't filling everything with this bad stuff. But it does, you know, the good stuff to say about that hopefully will will pressure people to live up to what the best of expectations and the worst of the way they paint us to be socialists and stuff. It's like, yeah, be as socialist as you can because we're going to need it quick. To fix all this stuff so thanks for listening sorry for rambling um i just felt like i wanted to get this stuff off my chest and again hopefully people will be shamed or uh somehow convinced not to um you know try this stuff again today or at least deterred from doing the same type of thing today and more than that hopefully somebody will go ahead and uh, arrest Trump for his role in it and you know we can move on from there I think Pence also deserves some thanks for you know not trying to do some crazy wacky stuff he has no power to do that Trump wants him to do and therefore defying Trump I think you know thank you Mike Pence even and if you know if you've had something about wanting to be president or believing you could be president your whole life you maybe you should be president and it's an honor to be president for a couple weeks too especially these two weeks and i'd much rather have you there showing the the um responsibility you showed than um trump so but also you know looking forward to joe biden even the way this is uh panning out he's done a, a, a good job i actually didn't see much of his speech about it um, they didn't ha have the time to show much of that 
but uh, but what he, what I did say was saw was good. I guess maybe you can't speak too strongly, but it was good to hear some other people speaking strongly and saying, you know, it's time to end this, not let Trump have this power anymore. Good for the social media companies to turn him off, but Facebook especially, I don't know much about Twitter, but Facebook especially has been a huge enabler of Trump and they're in crisis mode right now, maybe trying to clean up their act of coordinating these types of terrorist attacks. But like they need to be brought down for or Zuckerberg at least needs to be brought down for his role in enabling Trump because it was one of the most severe, both for getting him elected and Bolsonaro and Modi in India and Netanyahu and some other folks who uh, all have some of the worst virus problems as well. It's more than an attack on democracy, it's an attack on humanity and there needs to be consequences for that type of stuff. So. Um, anyway, to not end on a negative note, thanks again to Georgia and to all the voters and to all the people motivating, organizing the voters um, to win this and kind of just tip things to start turning the tide and get things back on the right track. And God has blessed America and everybody here and, um, and just thank you again. I'll have more to say soon, I guess, but um, I think I've said enough for now. Thanks for listening.